Hi everyone and welcome back to another Easy Links Live. I'm your host Ryan Bukema and just like how you're working from home, uh, we're broadcasting the show live today from my home office here at my house. So uh, kind of in the same boat that you are. Uh, on today's show, we're going to be talking about uh, the recent NewsLinks article. So if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, don't worry. Uh, we're going to cover some of the main points. And those main points are going to be the things that are coming up in the uh, 20.2 release. Uh, those items would be, uh, number one, uh, you now have the ability to process payments in Client Center. I know this has been a big thing that a lot of people have requested. We now have the ability to do that. Uh, number two, uh, the integration of Calendly into Client Center. So giving your insureds the ability to schedule meetings with you without having to do the back and forth of emails of when am I available? Are you available at this time? That's the thing of the past. With this integration, it makes it very, very easy for your insureds to schedule a time to get in touch with you. Uh, the third thing we're going to talk about is going to be an additional trigger that has been added to the automation center. And it's really there to kind of help well round the uh, carrier e-documents uh, feature that we we've had go out. So this has been a very, very uh, neat feature. And this is a very, uh, 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 I would say, um, an amazing uh, uh, addition that's been added to it to really round it all out for you. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about today is going to be some of the changes, some of the rating changes that we have for uh, Michigan, uh, Arizona, and Virginia. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about those. You can definitely read them in detail in our release notes or in the article if you'd like, but I just want to kind of highlight some of the things so that you're, you're, you're aware of them. So let's first start off by talking about the integration of uh, payment processing in Client Center. This is a really, really big feature, and I know a lot of people have asked for this, uh, so we're happy to be able to provide it for you guys. This is one of our Connect integrations, and it's an integration with Clearant Payment processing. So in order for this to work, you definitely have to have a clearant account. That's who's going to be actually processing the payments. And of course, it is uh, PCI compliant, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So let's go ahead and take a look real fast here. I want to show you what this looks like. Uh, one, from a setup standpoint in Connect. And then I also want to show you kind of what the insureds are going to look at and see. They're going to have the ability to make payments on premiums, on their invoices if you have like say accounting or maybe they just want to have a one-time payment that your agency you guys are asking them to pay for so you could send them an email directing them to the client center saying hey i need you to make a payment on this invoice or we need you to make a payment of this amount on this policy and then you can send that link from client center they'd go into client center they'd make the payment and everything's good and ready to go so what i want to do real quick is just take a look at those screens and kind of give you an idea of what this is going to be. So let's let's have a quick look here. Okay, so the first integration we're, we're looking at here is for the payment processing integration into Client Center. In order for that to happen, the very first thing you have to do is you actually have to go into Clear and make sure that you have an account signed up to be able to process your payments. Uh, that's going to be really important because there's going to be an app or an uh, a rather an API key that's provided, and you'll need that when you're making the connection. Uh, with Clearant and EasyLinks Connect. Now, EasyLinks Connect, we've talked about that a whole lot. Um, some of you might not be familiar with what EasyLinks Connect is. So EasyLinks Connect is basically uh, our integration or our ability to connect and integrate uh, with third-party systems, wherever they are, whatever ones we want. Um, so we already have a couple uh, that are in use right now. We have life insurance, is going to be one of them through back nine so you can get life insurance quotes that's going to be a connect integration so uh do want to kind of let you guys know what that is before we jump into this so um, when you get into easy links connect you'll be in the marketplace and this is where you can enable things and you'll see something here that says payment connector this is the new item that we have and if we come into here we can actually click on the clearance option now we already have this enabled and it's enabled uh for the purpose of the demo so uh, so we'll just go ahead and click into it. Uh, there's going to be information in here that you'll need to read through when you're enabling the actual uh, integration. You'll also, whenever you go in here, you'll have an app secret or code that's provided to you from Clearant. That's how you actually connect uh, Clearant to EasyLinks. And it's pretty simple. It's a very simple process. Uh, now, once this is all integrated, uh, we can actually go see what it looks like on a customer's account. So if, for example, if we're here on James's uh, Hollingworth's Hollingworth's account, we can go to his client center and we can see what he can actually see. So if we're here in client center, 
Well, notice James will see a new option here that says payments. Uh, so if he wants to make a payment or if you want to direct him there to make a payment, he would simply click on payments. This right here shows him a payment history, the history that he has. You can also print it out. But if he wants to make a payment, all he has to do is just click make payments. He has the ability to pay on policies, a one-time payment. Uh, and if you have accounting enabled, you would have the ability to pay on invoices uh, in accounting. So for sake of matter and the time we have, so we're just going to make a payment here on a policy real fast. Show you what the screens look like. So let's select the homeowners. Let's agree to the... Uh, the uh, content right here, and we're going to go ahead and hit continue. What's happening is uh, EasyLinks Connect is now connecting to Claret to actually do the payment processing. We can see here the uh, amount for the homeowners that's going to get paid, the $850. We can see the processing fee, and then James has the ability to either pay by credit card or by check. It's completely up to him. It's pretty simple. Now, once these payments actually go through, he'll have an actual uh, notification that'll go out that'll let you know that there's been a payment made. Uh, and then you can come here to see what's going on. So this is another really cool tool that we've integrated into EasyLinks that makes Client Center really, 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 really valuable for your customers. And pretty simple uh, process if you actually look at the screens that we have here. Not, not too difficult to actually navigate through uh, for your insurance. So pr pretty easy. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is the second thing we mentioned up uh, off the top of the show, and that's going to be our integration with Calendly. I mean, how many times have you guys uh, had insureds emailing you trying to set up a, a time for a meeting? They, you know, say, hey, I'm available at 10. Of course, you're busy at 10, so you send back, how about 1030? They say they're busy at 1030 and vice versa, and it just keeps going on as long email string. Uh, that's kind of a thing of the past with this integration. Uh, once again, it is an integration in our EasyLinks Connect marketplace. Uh, and what you're going to have to do is make sure you do have a Calendly account. Uh, this will allow you to integrate your Outlook or your Gmail calendar uh, into uh, Calendly so that it can be accessed uh, uh, via this, uh, this Connect integration in Client Center. Okay. So what I'd like to do first is that let's take a look at just kind of how it's set up and what it looks like once again in Connect. And then I want to show you what the insureds are going to see in Client Center. Uh, and then we'll talk about what happens when an actual meeting is scheduled. There's some confirmation emails that go out. So we'll just talk real quickly uh, about that. So uh, once again, let's, let's head back over to the screens. And I just want to show you guys real quick what this looks like uh, inside the Connect product to start. So let's head to those screens. So like before, uh, just with uh, the payment processor, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you go to Calendly first in order to make sure that you have your, uh, your different uh, calendars synced uh, here. This is what you're gonna be able to sync your calendars to and then provide that information through Connect into the client center. So uh, like before, we're in the actual Connect marketplace. Uh, and the way to actually get there, if we come to the communication area right here, now we click on communications, we click on Calendly, and just like before, you'll need to set up your Calendly integration here in order for your calendar to appear in Client Center. So uh, you do have a, a, the ability to provide the URL that's provided by Calendly. Um, that's going to be what associates your calendar to connect and then connect into uh, uh, the Client Center for your customers. So. It's really neat is when you come to Client Center, your users are going to see, or your actual insureds are going to see this cool new option down here, schedule an appointment. So if I want to go ahead and schedule an appointment, let's go ahead and try to do this. Um, they're going to be able to see what times you're free on the different days. Let's say uh, we're going to maybe do it for Monday. Uh, we want to do it at 11 a.m. And we want to go ahead and confirm as the actual uh, insured. Uh, I have my information here. I need the phone number that I'm going to call uh, that I'd like them to call me at. Let's put in a number. Uh, and then let's go ahead and also write down here, add in a comment. Uh, uh, would like to uh, talk about boat insurance. Maybe I like to talk about boat insurance. Maybe that's what the, the meeting is going to be. I can schedule the event. And when the event's scheduled, they'll get a confirmation right here letting them know that it's been scheduled. And two emails will actually get sent out. One gets sent out to the insured, letting them know that the meeting is there. And another one goes into your inbox, letting you know that somebody scheduled a meeting with you. 
So if I go here real quick to my emails, I can actually see the one that came in. Let's see, here we go. So this email right here is gonna allow me to see uh, that we're scheduling, uh, the call's been scheduled. They'd like to talk about adding boat insurance. And then right here, there's two options. You have cancel and reschedule. So as the uh, insurance agent, uh, let's say something pops up on your calendar and you can't do it. Well, you can choose to reschedule with your insured or cancel the meeting. And the exact same thing happens for them. They can choose to come in here and cancel it if something comes up in their schedule or they can reschedule with you. But the point is, is that this is a very, very, very simple, simple uh, integration in the client center that provides great value to your actual users. Uh, easy for them to just come in here, schedule a meeting, and once again, find when you're free so it eliminates a whole lot of the back and forth emails as to, are you free at 11? No, I'm not. I'm free at uh, one. And oh, I'm not free at one. This stops all that from happening. And it makes it really the, a great way for your uh, insureds to actually get a lot of their servicing done right here, right here in the client center. So the third thing we want to talk about today uh, is going to be an addition uh, additional feature that's been added to really well round out our carrier e-document effort. Uh, and this is going to be an additional trigger that has been added into Automation Center, as well as some additional filters and a new action so that you can fire off workflows when a carrier e-document uh, comes in and is matched to an applicant's policy. Uh, one of that, the new action that we're going to have here is the ability to automatically share that document that comes in from the carrier into Client Center for the insurer to look at. I mean, this is a pretty neat thing and it's gonna be a workflow that you could set up in Automation Center. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at the setup process in Automation Center, what it looks like, and we'll just talk through what it's gonna actually be doing for you, which is, which is pretty neat and helps reduce a lot of time here in the office. So let's take a look real quick here at the screens here in Automation Center. So what you'll wanna do here in Automation Center when we finally get uh, to create a workflow, we'll wanna come down here to the uh, management system card. And if we expand that, we can see all the different workflows that we can create that are related to the management system. And right down here at the bottom, uh, we have a new one, carrier document received. Now, we already have carrier notifications as, as, a, as a working trigger in the system. This is going to be the new one that we added, right? Uh, so if we click on it, we can actually choose what filters we want to apply. And the filters are pretty important because they're going to allow us to determine what we want to happen, what we want to have happen with the different uh, document types that we're going to get. So for example, if it's the deck pages, maybe we want a certain thing to happen. If it's a uh, uh, non-payment uh, or non-renewal notices, maybe we want a different thing to happen in Automation Center, okay? So let's go ahead and just choose to deck pages and policy documents. So anytime deck pages and policy documents come in, we can come here to actions and choose what we want. Maybe we want as normal to create a note in a task force. Let us know about that. Maybe we want to send an email. And here's the new thing that's really cool. Maybe we want to just go ahead and automatically share that uh, those policy documents right to client center so that your insureds will be able to access them, see the information, and even have it already available without you having to go into the applicant's account, find the document, select a share and then have it pushed over to client center. This automation automated rule will automatically push the uh, documents directly into client center for you. So we've kind of had a theme today with a lot of the things that we've been working on or shown, uh, payment processing, uh, the um, Calendly integration, right here with the um, uh, carrier documents that I received and sharing them to client center. This is really our goal to push client center to be this digital servicing representative for you so that your insurance can go there, schedule meetings, pay policies, get their carrier documents. It's every, it's a one-stop shop for them. And this is what uh, we're trying to build as a great benefit for your agency uh, to build value in it. And this is another one of the cool things that we've added with this release uh, in order to make Client Center more valuable to you guys. Okay, and finally, the, the last thing we want to talk about today that's in the News Links article is going to be some of the rating changes uh, that are going to be happening in the states of uh, Michigan, uh, Arizona, and Virginia. And once again, we're not going to go into a lot of detail about these, uh, but these are going to be some state changes that we needed to put into the system. And I just want to give you guys kind of an idea of what they are. So effective July 2nd, 
uh, in Michigan, the, there is going to be a now a new state minimum liability coverage for auto quotes. Okay, you're going to be able to see that now in the system. Uh, there's also uh, going to be some new state regulations around uh, bodily injury, uh, uninsured motorists, and underinsured motorists. Uh, uh, so you'll have some new regulations there that we have implemented in the system, uh, as well as the for the state of Michigan, the uh, PIP limit. Uh, has uh, had some updated values. So excessive attendant care, uh, which will now be enabled if the PIP limit uh, has a value other than uh, unlimited and uh, no coverage. So those are some changes that are going to be effective in Michigan. Uh, as for the state of Arizona, some of the changes that are going to be as of July 1st uh, are going to be uh, new changes once again to the state minimum liability coverage uh, for auto quotes. Uh, you also have in Arizona, they're not going to be supporting anymore the 1530 and the 2525 uh, splits for uh, bodily injury, underinsured motorists, and uh, uninsured motorists. Those are going to be changes. They're not going to be supported anymore in Arizona. So you'll see that in the drop downs they've been actually removed for you, uh, as well as uh, the $10,000 uh, uh, um, coverage uh, will no longer be supported uh, as a selectable value. Uh, for the general coverage support uh, property damage in auto quotes. So those are uh, two things that we really wanted to kind of point out to you guys. Of course, you can read a little bit more about those in the release notes uh, for the uh, the rating changes. And the final rating ch uh, change for a state is going to be within Virginia. Uh, uh, you are now going to have three values that you can select for gender. Uh, you can uh, select uh, uh, male, female, and not specified. Uh, that's also something that's happened with a couple of other states already, but it's now something that we've implemented also in Virginia for you. So those are the things that we're going to be that have been covered in the uh, news links article. Uh, if you have a chance, go back, read it, uh, go back through. Uh, there's a lot of really great information in there. And um, that pretty much concludes everything we wanted to talk about today here on Easy Links Live, except for um, that thing I teased right off the top of the show about a big little, a big thing coming to the system that I want to let you guys in on a little secret. So with this release, we are going to be starting a pre-selected beta. And the agencies that are a part of the pre-selected beta have already been notified. They're already involved in it. I just wanted to let you know what they're going to be testing out and looking at. They're going to be looking at applicant co-applicant switch. So this has been a really big requested item. Uh, and it's going to be something that we're adding into Easy Links 5. So if you have Easy Links 5, this will be something eventually that you will be able to have. And we're once again, we're going into that pre-selected beta, so we're letting some agencies test it out, and then we'll be releasing it out to everybody else. But what's really neat about this is you're going to have a, a quick way to just swap the co-applicant and the applicant. Just flip them, right? I mean, how many times have you submitted quotes for the primary applicant and thought to yourself, hmm, I wonder if I can get a better rate if I go with uh, the co-applicant? Now, we all know that that can be kind of a bit of a pain in the current system to change the fields and reorder stuff and reorder the information. Now, that's a thing in the past with this new feature. You're just going to be able to flip them, resubmit, and see what the values are. So it's a pre-select beta once again. Agencies have already been alerted to uh, being a part of it. But I wanted to give you guys kind of a hint. It's a really cool feature that's going to be coming out really soon here for Easy Links 5. So pay attention. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot more uh, marketing information coming out about it. But just wanted to kind of let you guys in on a little secret here during our show. So um, that's all the time we have today uh, for Easy Links Live. Um, I hope you guys uh, uh, have learned a lot of cool stuff, seen some neat things. Uh, and I really appreciate you all taking part in the show today and uh, uh, viewing it with us. And um, as we say here in Texas, always, uh, we'll see y'all later, okay? <laughs> so thank you uh, for watching and uh, you guys have a great rest of your day.